Hey guys, it's Sarah. It is that time of the year again for another quarterly wrap up. Uh, so this is all the books I read from April through the end of June. And I read 16 books in those three months and I DNF'd one. So I'm actually looking like it's between this quarter and last quarter, it's about an even amount of books that I've been reading, which is actually pretty good. I'm gonna go, these are in the order in which I read them. And if you watched my previous wrap up video, you we left off in the middle of my K Webster reading vlog because I did do that the last week of March into April. So we're going to finish up the books that I read for that vlog, the first one being The Wild. And I did not rate this book because I don't know how I would really rate it. Um, content wise, I know some people give it one star just because of what it's about. Uh, this is a book about um, a family that goes off the grid. They're just having some problems in their um, like family life and there's a lot of a lot's going on the mother is depressed they lost a family member and it's just been a hard time so the father decides to take his whole family off the grid they sell everything he sells his share his company i think he has they get an rv and then they're just going to build their own house he buys i forget how many acres of land i think in alaska and then tragedy strikes when the mother dies on their excursion and it's just the father and daughter that end up having to survive in the Alaskan wilderness um, and it turns into a bit of an incestual situation going on there's a lot of a lot of triggers in this book aside from, I mean if, if you're not okay with incest then don't even bother reading the rest of them but yeah there's a lot of crazy shit that happens in this book and it's from her banned book list so obviously it's banned for a reason um, but so I didn't actually rate this book I won't say I enjoyed it I mean but it was I couldn't put the book down there was a lot going on in a short amount of time um, so I didn't actually read this but this was the first book I read in the second half of the or second quarter of the year and then we have this is war baby which is the last book I read for that K Webster reading vlog I love this book I gave it five stars it was a surprise for me. I talk about, I've talked about this a couple times already, I think on my channel. And I, it didn't go the way I expected it to go. And I'm actually very glad for that because I loved it and I'm obsessed with it. And I actually just finished finally the second book, but that's gonna be on next quarter's um, wrap up because I did read it as the first book in July. So, but I love this, five stars. So the next book I read uh, was an audiobook and it was Don't Kiss the Bride by Carrie and Cole. I loved this book. I gave it five stars. Um, this one was a, a, an age gap slash marriage of convenience romance, um, but it was phenomenal. Uh, I, I've also talked about this a few times on my channel, I believe. And this one is about, I don't remember, the, I just remember the hero's name is Jude. I don't remember the girl's name. Um, but she has a shitty home life. She's suffering from like eating disorders and just a lot of health issues. He works construction across the street from her school and they kind of strike up like a friendship and then he sees that she needs help and he's in a position to help her. So he offers to marry her in order to get her on his health insurance so she can afford to go to the doctor and get her medication and stuff like that. And then once he realizes what kind of crazy home life she lives in he uh she moves in with him and it's very slow burn but it's just the ending the the end result is just so worth the wait i absolutely loved this book it's probably one of my favorite books definitely of the year so far uh maybe of all time um and i give it five stars i think i said that already the next one i read was also on audio and that was waking olivia by elizabeth o'rourke another I see I this says I gave it four stars um I don't know like because I loved that it was a really good book I think you know what it was um okay so backtracking a little bit so this is about uh Olivia who is a big track star at, her, at a D1 university but then she gets expelled from the university for assaulting a student and gets taken on by a like D3 school for track and she is having issues concentrating she's always goes to, to practice tired she's late and the coach is like what is wrong like why did we bring her on she's like complete she obviously has no 
work ethic she doesn't put any effort in like this is like she's a problem child but what he doesn't know is that she suffers from night terrors that cause her to sleep run and she will run like miles five seven miles in a night and then have to go to practice the next morning and do the drills and everything so but the reason so I, I was expecting I was like, okay this is a mentor student sort of small age gap I think she's 21 and he's like 24 or something so the age gap is very very small the more taboo part of it is that he's her, her mentor so he finds out about her issues and help, starts to help her he gets his mom involved and we love his mother she's adorable um, and the reason for her night terrors is actually very very dark and it went, it, this book went in a direction that I did not expect it to at all. Like, like I said, I expected it to just be like a taboo mentor student sort of relationship, but there's a lot more of a darker element to this that I wasn't anticipating. Um, so this should have been a four star book. I mean, if, excuse me, this should have been a five star book. However, I listened to it on audio and I did not like the male narrator. The female narrator was fine. She was a narrator that I've listened to before and I like her. The guys, I, I'm sorry to say, but his voice was just really annoying. And the fact that I was listening to it on like, I think two times speed, it just made it even worse. <laughs> so I couldn't with his voice. Um, also at the very end, there's an other woman trope that I, I normally don't mind it depending on what the situation is, but it just felt weird because it was thrown in there and caused issues. Um, so it's probably more of like a four and a half than a four star. Next is another audio. I was in like a weird audio kick at the beginning of this quarter. Um, and I read Love in the Wild by Emma Castle. This was more like, I didn't, I think I read, I read a uh, nove uh, short story by her, I think in my short stories vlog. And I enjoyed, it was the one I enjoyed, I think among the, uh, more than the other ones. So I was trying to see what else I, hers I could read. So I picked this up, it was a Tarzan retelling. I wasn't that impressed with it. I ended up giving it only three stars. It was kind of boring and the villain was like typical mustache twirling, uh, Disney-esque sort of villain. So I wasn't fully impressed with that. I don't even, I remember very small bits of that book. Um, so I wasn't impressed. It was fine, but like I wasn't impressed. I think I just mostly listened to it because I also liked the narrator for that as well. Um, but there are a few other Emma Castle books that I'm interested in reading. Uh, I think Midnight with the Devil, I think, is one that's hers. And there's another one that I want to read by her that my hoopla has. Next, we, I read Center Mass by Lanny Lynn Vale. And I only gave this two stars. I literally picked this up because uh, I was looking for Jeremy York uh, narrates it. And I really enjoy him as a narrator. So I picked this up. It was short. I just wanted something to kind of listen to just to kind of fill until I figured out what I wanted to read next. And I gave this two stars. I did not realize that this is a spin-off series of like two other series that Lanny Lynn Vale wrote. So there were a couple scenes that happened in this that I was like, they were kind of skimmed over. It was weird because it was like, this, this major thing was happening like in the background. So you could tell it was like an event that happened in a different book but our hero, like the characters in this book were there when that event happened. So now you're getting it from like their point of view, but like you don't get the whole story because the whole story happened in a different book. And this was the first in this series. So I know it was a different series that happened. And I was like, I'm not reading a whole other <laughs> series. Like I was just like, no. Um, so there was just a lot of uh, scenes that were missing or felt like they were missing to me because I didn't read the other two series that are in this world. So. I kind of was a missed, it was a miss for me. And then after that was another one. It was called Outlaw's Kiss by Nicole Snow. Uh, this, again, I gave this one two stars. I honestly don't remember Center Mass or Outlaw's Kiss. I really don't remember what these are about, to be honest. Um, and that's why I gave them two stars. They were forgettable. Uh, I know Outlaw's Kiss was an MC romance, I believe, and that's another start to a series okay then after that we started getting into some more of my favorite things which was some more dark romance uh, I started my I think most anticipate like books that I was really wanting to read for a few years now vlog and the first one on that vlog is Twisted Loyalties by Cora Riley this is the first book of the Kimura Chronicles and I gave this one see I also gave this says I gave this one four stars but I'm like 
but I loved this book. It gave me all the feels and gave me my, my heart physically hurt, which I mentioned again a few times on this vlog and this channel. And um, so it should, probably should be five stars because I really enjoyed it. Um, this one is Fabiano and Leona. And the fact that I remember their names means <laughs> that I really loved it. So this is the, this takes place in Las Vegas with the, I think it's the Italian Mafia. And I mentioned, I've talked about this book a couple times already on my channel, so I'm not gonna really go in depth in it. I remember that Fabiano's father like disowns him for his second, his younger son. He gets remarried and he wants his other son to inherit his whatever. And so Fabiano's cast out. He makes a new life on the Las Vegas Camorra as their enforcer. And he's the guy who, you know, roughs people up and takes care of business. And he meets Leona, who has recently moved in with her father because her mother is in a drug rehab. But her father also has his own addictions. He's like an alcoholic and a gambling addict. And he is deep in debt with the Kimura, which neither of them know until a little bit later on when his debt is called um, up for payment and things get really crazy and dark. The one thing I will say about the ending of this book is there's, of course it's a series, so there's an overarching plot that goes across the whole series. Um, and that is opened up at the very end of this book and it, there's a conflict between Fabiano and one of the other guys um, that is interrupted and abruptly brought to a halt because of something bigger that happens and I was like that was too easy <laughs> like instead of picking they just bring this whole other thing in and it causes uh, conflict it opens up the conflict for the rest of the series which is fine but I was like wait <laughs> um, but I still I still think this is five star I'm gonna have to change that on Goodreads I don't know why I gave it four star the longer I sit with it the more I'm like why is this why did I do that so five stars for that one then I found one of my new favorite series that I'm all still I'm also currently reading the second book of and then I read because I read Crow by A. Zivarelli, which is the first book of the Boston Underworld series. This is another mafia, but this is the Irish mafia. And no surprise, I give this one five stars. I loved it. And I'm currently me reading the second book, Reaper, which is the one I'm so excited for. Um, so this one, we have Lachlan, Crow, and Mackenzie. And Mackenzie's uh, friend goes missing, and she thinks that the... I think it's the McKenna Syndicate is the name of their mafia, um, has something to do with it. So she infiltrates the McKenna Syndicate, gets close with Lachlan, thinking that he can get her information she needs on what happens to her friend, and things kind of get a little bit crazy from there, and I'm really excited. I love this series so much, and uh, again, five stars, love it. I can't wait to read the entire thing. And the last book I read for that vlog was Bullseye by Monica James. This is one I've been wanting to read for so, so long, and I gave this one four stars. Um, I'm trying to remember. Oh, this one is Bullseye. I, his, I think his name's Cody or Corey, or I think it's Cody. Corey is his real name, but they call him Bull for Bullseye because the first time he kills someone, he shoots them square in the chest and he was like a young kid um but he is just recently out of prison he was in prison for 12 years he was in prison for a long time because he when he was a teenager he witnesses his brother get brutal like you see it it's on page witnesses him get brutally murdered by this group of guys and he goes after them and he ends up killing one of them before he gets arrested and sent to prison and his entire time in prison all he can think about is getting revenge so now he's out trying to get revenge and we have our heroine who i can't remember what her name is right now lily i think oh that's right that's right i remember her name is lily because her stage name is tiger lily which is my friend's dog's name anyway tiger lily is a stripper she is also a single mom um, and during the day, like her day job is a ballet teacher and at night she strips for all the extra money and they have a thing, it's their romance that happens while he's on a revenge quest and someone is targeting her, threatens her. It's a really good book. Um, I don't know why, again, again, I don't know why I gave it four stars. I don't know, but I love this series and I can't wait to pick up uh, Bullseye. Okay, next we have 
a couple books that were for a vlog that I ended up having to scrap because I was going to post it anyway. It wasn't very successful of a uh, vlog, but I ended up having to scrap it because dummy me accidentally deleted the clips for it. So that vlog is not going to happen, but I did a thing where I was going to read my on my want to read list on Goodreads. I just sorted it by least um, least favorite and or highest rating and lowest rating. That's what it was. Highest rating, and lowest rating. And I picked the highest rated and lowest rated books on my want to read list. The lowest rated being The House of Dies Drear by Virginia Hamilton. Now, this is a book I read in fifth grade. It's a book that has stuck with me all these years and I wanted to reread it because I just wanted to see have the nostalgic feel and see if I still felt the same way about it that I did then. And the answer to that is I do not. I gave it three stars because of the nostalgic feel and there's a lot of interesting um, information on the Underground Railroad and the Civil War and slavery and the abolitionist movement. Um, so we have our boy he's a young boy named Thomas him and his family move into this house his dad is a professor I think and they move into this house that was supposedly part of the Underground Railroad and he, a lot of they're supposed to be like it's supposed to be like haunted and there's all these tunnels and secret passageways in the house and they unfolds the story of Dyes Dreer who was the owner previous owner of the previous owner he was the owner of the house during the um, days of the Underground Railroad and he was supposedly murdered in the house along with I think two other slaves. I listened I listened to the audiobook which is what I listened to when we were in I was at elementary school. The audiobook was from like 1996 or 97 or something like that so it was so nostalgic and interesting but uh, there were um <laughs> she just gets in my face. Um, there were like scenes in this book that I thought I remember, but they weren't the same as I remember. So she keeps giving me her ball. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's why it's three stars. It was, it was what it was. It was a school book. I wasn't what I was remembering it to be, but it's fine. Then the next book I read for this was actually the highest rated on my TV, on my uh goodreads want to read list but this was out of only 17 ratings um uh, and this is a book i dnf'd this is the one book i dnf'd this quarter and that's dirty mary by danny malvin marvin um so this book was written by a local author and it's a fictionalized story of real events so it's a very heavy book. Um, I talk a lot more about it in that vlog and I'm really kind of annoyed that I deleted all the clips about it because I go in depth about it. But basically his son committed suicide. He had a girlfriend who was sexually abused and had all this crazy stuff happen to her and he always tried to help her and she was diagnosed with uh, dissociative identity disorder plus trauma and PTSD and all that kind of stuff and um, I don't I'm assuming she dies I'm not 100% sure about that but I didn't get very far into this book I just it wasn't even the content I mean there was a lot of even from the first couple pages a lot of dark crazy things happened but it was the writing unfortunately it was very choppy um, repetitive and it just it was I hate to say it, but it was just, it wasn't good. You can tell that the person who wrote this wasn't an author, um, which isn't, I mean, really people can write really well and not have written any books, but like you can tell that they weren't, I, there were, I don't even know if there was an editor for this, but it was just, it was hard to read strictly because of the way it was written. And I, aside from that, you don't get really any, inner monologue you get mostly from I forget what his name is um Auden is the hero you get um mostly from Auden's point of view and it's very very insta love like like serious insta like he sees her and is like instantly in love with her and there's just weird it's just the dialogue is weird and 
I don't know. And he like Mary has like a three, I think three different personalities that switch back and forth between each other. And just like it's it's very jarring to read. And it was just not well, not well. Which I'm sorry. I, I DNF'd. I had to DNF it. I was like, oh, let me just push through. It's not very long. And I was like, I can't. I don't I'm not going to waste my time. Um, OK. And then the last few books I read were for my vlog that I recently posted, which was uh, reading booktubers favorite historical romances. So the first one I read for that was Temptation of a Highlander by Elisa Braden. This one was four stars. We have our heroine who is being I think she meets a guy um, during a ball during the season and he ends up becoming more of a stalker type of character and he starts threatening her life and she ends up seeking protection in I think the Scottish Highlands if it's I don't remember who the guy is if he's a, a friend's friend or a friend's relative or something but she goes up there seeks protection from him and it was a fun room I gave it four stars and like the further I get away from it the less I remember about it but that's how I am with audiobooks like I say this all the time um, so there was that one and then I read Annie's song and I gave this four stars I have extensive commentary about Annie's song on that vlog so I'm gonna link that if in case you want to watch it it is very long so I'm sorry for that but you can skip around if you need to do what you will but there's a lot of commentary about my thoughts on Annie's song because the beginning 75 80 percent of it I loved I love it I love Alexander as a hero he made me swoon. I love him. And then the last like 15% I wish would have, would have been taken out of the book because it felt pointless. <laughs> there was no almost no reason for it. And I wasn't a fan and it kind of ruined Alex's character in my eyes and I was very upset about it. So we're just gonna pretend that the last 15% didn't happen. And I'm gonna just rate the big if, if I rated the first 75% it would have been a five star book. I loved it. Uh, we have our heroine Annie who is sexually assaulted by Alexander's younger brother. She ends up pregnant um, and he is like appalled and mortified by what happened so he decides to do right by what happened and take her in and care for her and the child. Now throughout her entire life Annie had people have thought Annie to be mentally challenged and she's been kind of hidden away from society. She hasn't been since she was six years old like she supposedly she had a, a disease that caused her to have some kind of brain damage and so since then she was never really she never really went to school she never taught anything she was kind of treated as an invalid pretty much and um when she goes to live with and her parents also have been like they've been like they loved her and wanted to protect her but at the same time they're like they just as soon as Alex decides that he's going to take take care of her they just pawn her off and want nothing to do with her and he is like so angry that her parents and anyone would treat her like this because she is such a sweet girl and she's not as mentally disabled as people thought she was there's actually an underlying condition and a reason why she has these tro these problems um so yeah so i i loved this i really really did like this i watched the live show because it was a historical hellions pick for the month of june i think and i was very upset because a lot of people didn't like it and i'm like what uh, i forgot how many people on that live show i think there was four or five people on that live show and like three out of the four gave it like two star three star and i'm like but sam from sam reads a little gave it four star so I actually felt a little bit better <laughs> that I wasn't the only one who enjoyed it as much as I did. I mean, I could see, again, watch that vlog. I talk about it a lot more. I could see where their points were coming from and I understood where they were coming from. But at the same time, I'm like, I enjoyed it. <laughs> okay, after that, I read The Madness of Lauren Eden McKenzie by Jennifer Ashley. I gave this book five stars. I loved it. We have Ian who's on the autism spectrum. He uh, was put away in an asylum for like I forget how many years because he was witness to something horrible but they claimed in he was in he'd gone mad which is why he was put in the asylum um, and he was and ever since he ever since then like, even the whole the whole McKenzie family has like this whole like stigma surrounding them and um, uh, there were a couple murders that happened 
that the there's a, an inspector in this who was like investigating he's like completely he's like after he's gunning for the Mackenzie family he doesn't even care if they did it or not he's just going to point fingers and say that they did because he thinks they can just throw money around and get away with whatever and he is sick of it so he is thinking Ian did it his brothers all think he did it Ian thinks his one brother did it like no one really knows exactly what happened and so there's like a little bit of a murder mystery going on with this and then we have our heroine Beth who I can't remember what her whole thing oh she she was a companion to an elderly heiress and when she dies she inherits her fortune and I forget what else I don't remember. I, I'm losing. I completely forget what the whole thing is with her. But I think I was just more in, intrigued by Ian's character. I loved him so much. He was such a cool character and a sweet guy. I know. I loved him. Um, so yeah, I gave this one five stars. And then the final book that I read this quarter, I actually finished it on the last day of June, um, was Say Yes to the Marquess by Tessa Dare. I gave this one four stars. This was enjoyable. This one we have um, Piers and, not Piers, sorry, uh, Rafe and Cleo. Cleo is engaged to Rafe's older brother Piers and has been since they were like teenagers, but Rafe has been uh, overseas and abroad for eight years and she's been waiting around for him to come home so they can get married and finally she and has an, it says enough is enough. She inherits a castle, I believe. Um, so, but in order for her to do what she wants, she has to have these disillusion papers signed. So she goes to Rafe to have him sign them, and he is hesitant to do so. He doesn't want to do so. He doesn't want to do it um, just because of like loyalty to his brother and things like that. Um, so instead, they hatch a plan to plan a wedding uh, and have it everything prepared and ready for when uh Piers returns and along the way the two they maybe fall in love it was a little it took me longer to read than I was hoped than I thought it would um it, there was a little bit of a lull like in the middle I don't know if that was me or if it was the book and then toward the end when uh Piers does finally show up I there's a scene in here again I mentioned this in that vlog that I'm just about to post um but there's a scene in here where I where you're told like he, she, I think she is going to tell him that she the engagement is like she wants to not get married the engagement is off and we're kind of told what his reaction is rather than actually getting the scene between them which I think is a very important scene so I don't know why it was just kind of like told to us instead of us getting to actually see it so I was like I would have hoped to I would have liked to have seen that scene but I was glad that we did get some of Piers's like perspective and his thoughts on things like a little bit later on. So yeah, there was that. Um, I don't care. Oh, and the other thing was, so Rafe is a prize fighter. We don't get like any of that in here. There is a lot of talk of it, a lot of talk that he was the reigning champion for the last five years until he lost his title to this guy that he was supposed to fight to regain the title but like we never get that fight and I'm like well what's the whole point of talking about this if it never happens and like we don't get any fight like at all there's one and it's not like a formal fight it's just kind of like a brawl so like I would have liked to even if it was in the prologue not even in the prologue do we get him having a fight so I'm like okay he's a prize fighter we he tells us he's a prize fighter but like we don't get to see it and I'm like well I would like to see it I would have liked to have seen it um, so that was the reason for the four stars. Otherwise, I did enjoy this. There was a lot of, I loved the, I think Bruiser was Rafe's, uh, trainer guy that he brings along and he pretends to be like this sophisticated guy with like a monocle and I had a lot of fun with him. Um, so yeah, this, I did enjoy this. I think this was the second book of the Castles Ever After series that I read. The first one. The first one that I read is actually the third book in the series, which is uh, When a Scott Ties the Knot. And I I was disappointed in that one, but I listened to it on audio. So I'm thinking I may go back and um, maybe reread it. I do have the physical copy, so I'm wondering if I might reread it, if I feel differently about it. Just because I keep saying my weird, it's my weird in a uh, relationship with audiobooks. I don't know. That's it. 
we're done. That was not as painful as I was expecting it to be. Usually I ramble and stumble over words when I do this, but I was prepared this time. Um, so yeah, so those are the 16 books that I read for April, May, and June. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!